And so these medications were originally developed for glucose control and then later were approved for type 2 diet or for uh, weight loss, right? Then as they showed benefit primarily as a result of the weight loss for things like cardiovascular, renal, um, you know, now it's like obstructive sleep disorder, um, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, like they're being approved for a lot of other indications that are secondary slash downstream from obesity and type 2 diabetes. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> these medications have been around for quite a long time. I think we're closing in on like 20 years, right? The very, the original form of these, actually it's probably more than 20 years, were initially basically a medication that were DPP4 inhibitors. Um, I Which stands for what? I think it's maybe dipeptidyl peptidase. I'll have to confirm okay. that. It's been so long since I've looked it up and it's just acronym soup. But that's the enzyme in your body that breaks down the natural production of GLP-1s, right? So when we eat certain types of foods, we produce GLP-1 and these... <clears throat> um, Enzyme inhibitors helped us maintain levels of GLP-1 above, like, normal for a while. And then they actually found ways to make the actual GLP-1 itself. <clears throat> Started with um, things like exenatide, and now we're in, like, the fourth, fifth, tenth, I don't know exactly what generation of these medications we are, but they're a lot more effective now. So to recap, these medications... <laughs> increase insulin sensitivity they slow gastric emptying and they reduce your appetite therefore lower calorie intake therefore weight loss right so they they essentially turn down the volume on hunger and they help the body better handle blood sugar 